It's live, <laughs> but nobody's on yet. That's fine, that's okay. Hello, people. Can you give me a few minutes just to log on? Because there's a few people following this today. What are you doing today? So today, we're going to start with... Oh, we're going to do both. We're going to do meat samosas and veg samosas. Because I know there's a few that want to do the meat and a few that want to do the veg. And also learn how to freeze it. Um, I forgot to empty the freezer, by the way, for this. This is going to be fun. Um, so, yeah, we're going to literally... And also do the pastry from scratch as well. Learn how to do that as well. Susan Meena says happy birthday. Susanna Golding says happy birthday. Hi, everybody. Thank you. I should do the happy birthday song today, shouldn't I really? I do it every other day, and today I haven't done it. I don't know if I'm going to start for a couple of minutes, because really the first part is going to be the dough, and a few people will miss how to make the dough. So I think I know there's a few people that are going to cook along with this. No doughs. No dough, okay. Right, okay, let's go. Let's just start. We're going to be like about a minute or so. So... To make about 50 samosas, I'm obviously going to make about 100 here, so I think so. I would use a packet of, um, packet of plain flour. I've got bread flour here just because it's easier than a packet. It was the first thing I grabbed. Plain flour is what I would normally use. So I think I've got a bucket of that over there, and I'll get that out in a minute. But this is just easy to show that we've got some plain flour. So I'm going to use a full packet. I'd suggest probably using about half to three quarters for your dough, because you won't need a full packet of flour. Um, but I will be using all of it, so I think so. I've got bread flour, but it's, it should be plain flour, which is, this is just a strong version of plain flour, okay? Um, it was just the first thing I grabbed in our study the other day. I actually went to the Arab shops, and I've now got 10 kilo sack of plain flour, because they're selling them in sack loads, brilliant. So, and a few people have asked me to make some oasters for them, so that's going to come handy. Right, to make the dough, I'm making the dough first, we're going to do that first because we want it to let it rest, so it'll rest for a good half an hour or so while we're cooking the actual mixture. So I think so. We'll start. I, as I said, I'm going to do a full pack, well, three quarters of the packet. You guys do. If you're just doing 50 samosas, just do about half the packet. I'd say you don't need more. You really don't need more than that. But I'm going to go for about three quarters of the packet. Put into a mixing bowl. But I suggest, honestly, do a lot less if you're just doing 50 samosas. You can always not make more dough as well if you run out. I've got left a little bit here, and the reason the more for rolling out, and we're also going to make some paste. So there's the flour. So to, to that, we'll add some. I've got some flour oil. You can use vegetable oil. You can use olive oil. So probably the equivalent of about three or four tablespoons. So one, two, three. There's about probably about four tablespoons worth in there. Some oil. We're going to add some nigella seeds. Now I'm literally going to put that in my hand. So it's about a tablespoon. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can just do plain flour and um, oil and salt. I just like the flavour of this in my pastry. Somebody's asked, can I cheat and use ready-made pastry? Yes, of course you can. We just don't like it. And my family would like would kill me if I use ready-made pastry, but of course you can. You can just get your ready-made pastry out and have it ready for rolling out with the fillings in a minute. Um, again, you'll use probably the same paste. Like I'm going to do a flour and water paste to stick it together. So, and again, some salt. So we've got oil flour. I've got less than a kilo in there, but I expect for 50 samosas, about half a kilo. Um, so about four tablespoons of oil, some nigella seeds, and you do need to flavour it. So about a half tablespoon of salt. So you just need a sprinkling of salt to give it flavour to the pastry. Now I'm standing by the sink. It's because I'm going to literally work in the sink. It's easier. So I'm running a bit of warm and a bit of cold water. Probably a bit more warm actually than cold. And I'm going to slowly mix that through, and I'm slowly going to go in and make a dough. So cold for me, so I'll have a bit more warm. Warm is better. Your notification setting for too high, because it keeps beeping away. Okay, we've got the warm, turn that cold down. So until you get a nice like a medium to firm dough, not too soft, actually not too hard either to be honest, it's got to be a medium dough. Bring it, keep bringing it together, 
You can use just a jug of water and pour it slowly if you want to, but you do need to use your hand and bring it together. Okay, so a bit more water. I can see some flour at the bottom, so I'm just going to put some water out down there. Happy birthday from Andrea Riley. Thank you, Andrea. Hope you learned how to make samosas today. Right, so here we go. So, a bit more, because I literally want the flour and that to go through. So this is just flour, a little bit of oil, salt, and I have put Nigella seeds in because just, just because I like the flavour, that is optional completely, okay? Right, it's quite a firm dough, so although it's sticky, I'm still going to add a little bit more, to, more water, because I want it to be a little bit soft as well. That's better. And do need it for a few minutes. Let's just turn that off a second because it's just going up my sleeve. Okay. Bring it together. Take your time. Bring your dough together. How sticky should it be? It shouldn't. I'm going to dry it out. I'm going to just put a bit more water on. You want it to be sticky, but you've got to, don't forget you've got to roll this. You want it to be firm. Or stick. It won't be sticky once I finish with it. It won't be too sticky because you're going to use flour to roll it out as well. All right, so it is quite fair but it's got to be easy to roll out so if you find difficult rolling it out make sure it's softer because we are going to roll it out quite wide as well i'm going to show you different shapes of samosas as well so a couple of different techniques can you use electric mixer to mix the dough um i've never done it for a samosa mixer but there's no samosas but there's no reason why not i've done it for um bread and naan dough i've done it for so yeah there's no reason why not and Rihanna says happy birthday. Thank you. Okay, all right, so keep working it. So you do want to, you just want to just start breaking up the gluten and the flour. All right, now because I'm going to rest it, that's probably where I want it to go. So because I'm going to give it, if I was going to work with it immediately, I'd probably need it another 10 more minutes, give it a good bashing, but I'm not. So. That's me. If you look at it, it's got I'm trying to lift it up so you can see it. And it's a firm, firm dough, it really is. But it's soft as well. It's a soft and firm dough at the same time. Right, so Charles says hello. Hi Charles, they just made the dough. You missed the dough, you have to watch that and repeat, missus. Right, so I'm gonna now go over. I'm going to leave it there, I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to cling film that so the top doesn't dry off. Okay, come over here. I'm going to get some, I'm going to get my cling film out. Now, the little trick with cling film as well is I wouldn't put it right at the top. Okay, I would loosely cover right where the flour is, where the dough is, I should say. So, I'm going to put it there. Because I don't want the dough to dry out, I'm just going to gently, just gently, don't squash it down, put it just directly over it just to stop it getting hard patches. So I think so that's that and ready. Katie Haynes says hello. Hi Katie, hope you learn how to make some samosas and make Happy some. Happy birthday. Thank you Katie. Here we go. So that's the dough. I'm just going to put it to the side and let it sit. So that's got flour, about half a tablespoon of salt. I put Nigella seeds in, that's optional some oil and a good knead and just plain flour. So we're just going to leave that to rest, leave that out the way. Now I'm going to start with the actual cooking. So I'm going to put the mint, if you're doing the lamb mint, so the gas is going on, if you do, put on the low gas just because I'm talking to you. If you're doing the mints, I've actually washed my mints, ready. So I'm going to put that straight, this is a kilo of mints. I have weighed this, so I know this is a kilo of mints going into my pan. Now, spices. So I've literally put that straight in. I'll do the vegetable one in a minute. I'm just gonna just focus on getting the meat one started first, okay? So what we'll do is we add the spices first. So it's a kilo of mince, don't forget. And I, later on, I'm actually gonna make another three kilos, but I thought it'd be too much to do a big pan and then you'll try to work it downwards, it's easier. This will make about 50 samosas here. So salt, I'm gonna put about a level tablespoon of salt. 
okay just straight into the mince it's on low gas don't forget at the moment okay some chili powder so I'm going to put about a good half a tablespoon because when you fry samosas you need to taste that if you do it under if you don't put enough spice or heat into it you won't taste it at all sort of thing because the frying does dissipate it a little bit so you do need a bit of heat in that might even put some green chilies at the end as well um so but i'll taste it as well so i put my turmeric favorite turmeric in tablespoons all of them yeah i've got a tablespoon because that's what i would normally use when cooking usually i would tend to use a tablespoon curry powder you know i like the curry powder so i'm going to throw my curry powder in it's optional curry powder is optional but i like my curry powder some people do it some people don't so it's your four basics as always salt chili powder turmeric curry powder i am going to put a couple of cloves in two or three cloves because somebody will end up digging it. And usually when you're making the mix, you can find it when you're putting it into the samosa. So I put four, five in. Right. And then I'm going to put, is it put three cinnamon stick out? What is my cinnamon stick? Right, give me a second. Right, and I, I do put a cinnamon stick in still, even with this. But you will find these. You're not going to put these into the, the actual, and you'll take them out. Right. So get a spoon. Right, it's really important that you actually do break the mince up, okay? And do stir it regularly because you're going to have big lumps of mince otherwise. Um, beef mince, okay? Yeah, I, I know. I've done orders for beef mince. That's correct, yeah? Chicken. I have, I've actually got a chicken mince mixture in the fridge ready to make for somebody's samosas for tomorrow. Somebody's asked me to do chicken mince. I just didn't want to confuse about doing a third one. There's loads, I mean, there's, two, there's loads of different varieties. People do like cut up chicken and put, put it into like white sauce and fill in cheesy chickens and stuff like that. There's loads, absolutely, honestly, if you look online, there's so many different variations. But turkey. this is the two, absolutely, when you're turkey. <laughs> turkey mince. Turkey mince. Zed really wants me to make turkey. I don't like to taste. I've had turkey a couple of times and I really don't like the taste of it. So he always tells me every Christmas that we should have turkey and I just say no. Venison and turkey is the debate, isn't it? Venison. So I'm going to increase the heat now because I want the mince to cook. Oh, a bat. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll start the corona again. So the mince, this is going up. So while that's going up, we're going to do the potatoes. Now you can add what you like to the mince. Some people just do just mince, but that's very rare. So peas. we'll have peas, but I need the mince to brown a little bit. We are going to add some peas to it, but I'm just going to add the brown. So while that's browning, I'm also going to add some potatoes. I usually add some potatoes to give it a bit of flavour as well. And also it's just nicer with the potatoes inside. So I purposely haven't cut this up yet. No oil in there whatsoever. No, 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 it doesn't need it. Got the natural fat of the mince in there. So, got some potatoes out. Just washing my previous bowls. Okay. Right, so we're just going to peel. I have got a piece of potato. I just don't like using potato peel potatoes for some reason. That's very odd thing, but we bought a fancy one as well yesterday and the day before, didn't we? So, anyway, just peel the potatoes. You'll probably need about four, three to four for this amount. So, this is just for the mince samosa. This is not for the vegetable ones yet. We'll start that in about. Five ten minutes. Let's just get all the bits into here first. Can you stir this? I will do. Oh, you can too if you want to. Do you fancy stirring it? I would like try to do it. whilst holding this. You can actually put the, that onto the mince, not on the cooker. Mr. Charles is actually stirring the pan. He's doing me a favour. So, this is all going in here. Do you know when I lived in Spain, there was, we used to get a freezer packet, it made it so much more easier, and it actually had chopped up potatoes, carrots and peas and veg samosas were so much easier making them over there. Can't get that here in the UK. But in Mercadona, if you're in Spain, Mercadona did or should do a few years ago, they had potato, peas and carrots chopped ready for you. And it's perfect. That's a little trick. So yeah, let's have a look. What's he doing? So we keep stirring it and I said you just don't want big lumps of mince. Right, just keep stirring that. So I'm just going to wash my potatoes. Right, Yasmin, Hassan, can you just repeat what you put into the quinoa? Okay, so the mince is, there's one kilo of mince in here. 
at the moment. Um, it's got salt. There's literally salt. There's no oil. Nothing. I've not put any oil. You can't think some people do at the beginning. So I put a level tablespoon of salt in, half a tablespoon of chili powder, turmeric, curry powder, and my cinnamon stick and some cloves. That's all I put in for now at the moment. Just browning in the mince. That's really important sort of thing because you don't want to add peasy yet to it until this part starts browning. I think that she, I suggest the amateur into this. Shall I put it into the mince one? I'm going to put it into the veg one for sure. But I don't know whether to put it into the mince one. We've not tried the mince with that before. Do you think it's worth putting some amateur in? Who's got some ideas for putting the amateur in mango? Nice. Spice. Okay, that's starting to brown. Okay, so I'm just going to... Now, potatoes is very important. We keep them sort of kind of like the same size because you want to sort of cook them all evenly. My hands are blue, by the way, because I've just been doing blue icing. I'll show you that in a minute, what I've been doing with blue icing. So, here we go. So, you want to... This is like the most tedious part of making samosas, is this bit, I think. Actually, you no, know, rolling out coffee. So, you want it sort of... kind of evenly cut. Okay, so, and you can do two together, if you want to. Happy birthday from Corkin. From Corky. Oh, get me higher. Thank you. Okay, so the water, because obviously I've washed them in, so the water's just coming up out of there, so it's fine. But you'll see lumps, and I'll say if you don't stir it, it will get like a you'll get like a lumpy mince. So you really kind of like want to keep stirring this every now and then, which is good. This is looking good. Okay, that's okay. Still got a lot of water in it, so I think I think it's just because the washing. So I'm onto the second potato. I'm just gonna keep chopping potatoes while that's going down. And I'm also gonna use potato obviously in the veg. So those who are doing the veg smosas, you might as well start peeling what I'm doing now. Start with four or five potatoes and start your peeling of your potatoes and chopping exactly like what I'm doing. So you chop like this. So you can go ahead with me and start that. I'll probably say about Two kilos will make about 60, 70. So about a one half kilo. Four potatoes. I've got three here for this one at the moment. I think three will be enough for one kilo. Got to judge it as well because you might want less potato in and you might want more potato in as well. I think Sam puts a lot more in than me as well. So I think everybody's got their own sort of what they like doing, what they don't like doing. I put more peas in, I think, in mine. Here. Now with that water in there, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the potatoes to this because that water will cook the potatoes and the peas as well. So probably don't even need, I think maybe just two potatoes. I think I'm just going to judge it, see what I need. So I reckon that two potatoes would have been enough, but I'm going to use the other last potato anyway. Because what I'm also going to do now is add some peas to it. So that's about two potatoes in there. Um, I'm going to add some frozen peas straight out the packet. How much? Right. So we do it into a jug so you all know roughly. And again, it, you know, it's a personal thing as well because some people like less peas. Some people don't even like peas and just do more potatoes. You can just do peas and potatoes if you want. So I'm going to put the peas into my mug. Into my very big mug. So can you see? Let's go with one. See how one it goes. Just mug of peas. Yeah, I would do one. Yeah, it's about one. That's about right, actually. Okay, so I might do a tiny bit more. I'm going to do a tiny bit more because it wasn't for a while. That's not right. I've just done a handsome more. Okay, so that's plenty in there now. So while that is cooking, I'm going to put that on the lower heat. I know it sounds odd because you want time for the potato and the peas to cook. So it's about 20 minutes. So it's not on the highest heat now. I've just lowered it down a little bit. So let it cook down a little bit. Now actually it'll stop bubbling so I need a bit more higher. There you go. Okay. Right, so let that cook. While that's cooking, I said wash hands, we'll start with the 
start with the veg one now. Whoever's doing the veg samosas, because I know there's a couple of you doing it. So I've done the one potato. I'm going to put that into the back pan. And I'm going to peel a good few more now, and get that started. So I've got... Your sister's on now. So I've got a couple of kilos of potatoes. So I'm going to do probably about a kilo to a kilo and a half. Hi, Sal. Happy birthday, Sal, before I forget. And she'll smack me if I don't say happy birthday Have to her. Have you started without her? How dare I? So I've not put the gas on it yet because I'm just peeling up the potato. I want an even cook, so I wouldn't put the gas on and just start one load. So I think so. There you go. Uh, Have we got a wasp in the kitchen again? Yeah, an obligatory wasp. Has yeah, been... every single time we start filming now because it's summer and the back doors open. So we don't put we don't put the ventilator on the cooking ventilation on. So we open the back door to get some light and to get the cooking smell out. And we're currently we're having wasps. Yesterday we had some wasps in. Today we've got some wasps in as well. So is that is moving around with the camera? There he is. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Bring it back down, you dad. Thing. <laughs> What are you doing? Right, I'm going to put the heat back on the mince because it's slowed right down. I'm going to take it up. Just got to judge it. It's slowed right down on the cooking, so we do want it, that water to go out. Now, but the window is closed. Oh, you forgot to open it today. But there's a huge door. Right, so. I'm going to open the window to let it out. Okay, let me hold the phone. I'm going to hold the phone because he's just going to open the window. Can you close that door as well? Okay, so just stirring the mints. Okay, so there's a lot of water at the bottom at the moment, so we've just got to stir that out. So I'm going to put the gas back high because I want that. It's got to be a dry mix, okay? And that'll give time for the potatoes to cook as well and the peas to cook. Right, he's opened the window so I can go back to my peeling, okay? They're not very intelligent. They can't find their way out. Oh, you're still going on the wasp! Oh, God! <laughs> right. So... Are you going to boil the potatoes in water no, for the veg? Not yet. Well, we're going to add water to the pan. But we're not going to boil the potatoes before, no. So I've just washed my potatoes. There's the four. That's five in there, so we'll see. But I think I'll be a couple of more still. I'm just going to start slicing the potatoes up. No, Salma, she hasn't added parsley yet, but that's at the end. I know. We're going to add parsley at the end. Am I adding parsley or co um, coriander? Sure, Mr. Chowdhury works his way around the herbs wrong. You and your blood and parsley. Parsley is coriander. Parsley is not coriander. The two completely different herbs. I think you have to understand this. I swear to goodness. Right. That's bubbling away, I can hear it, that's fine, it's good. So, and the mince has been broken up, don't forget, if you've got like lumpy mince, make you keep stirring it to break up any lumps. You don't want lumps in it. The wasp has gone. Can you breathe again now, is that okay? So don't forget, I'm still trying to get roughly even sizes of potatoes to get this cooking. I didn't do this beforehand because I know people are doing this as they're going along, so I want them to do it and just take the time to so peel and chop. We used to do this when we were kids. My mum used to make us sit there, peel and chop potatoes, and we'd all sit together, make samosas together. When we were, even when we were kids, we've done, we've done this. Yep. I'm not giving away my age yet, honestly. Parsley and coriander are derived from the same plant. <laughs> Who's saying that now? They're just slightly different <laughs> genome. Who's saying that? <laughs> they all came from the same species of plant a long time ago. Wow. So this is about five potatoes. I'm still gonna add a bit more because you want a bit more mix. You don't wanna you're gonna sit me about the 40-50, so I'm gonna have three. That's about a kilo, a kilo and a pot, a kilo probably reckon. We've put three in there, haven't we, as well? Um, kilo and a bit. Done. No, because like, we wanted to both stare if you want to. But well, we wanted to let the water go out and evaporate. So it's on high gas, letting that water, any water, go out. If you've got no water in the bottom, that's fine. Just keep the lower heat, that's all. Oh, and keep stirring it. It's only because it's freshly washed, so there's still water clogged around the mince, probably that's all there is. 
So it's a dry mix. It should be a dry mix by the time we finish with this, yeah. And these potatoes have got Can you use frozen vegetables from the packet? You can, yeah, yeah, this was in, in Spain They used to have frozen chopped potatoes I'm not even lying, it's brilliant And in this one I'm going to add You'll see in a minute what I'm going to add to the veg one in a minute Because I'm going to add frozen vegetables to it I always do I don't just do peas and potatoes I always do um, frozen mixed veg So definitely and this is drying up quite well. Okay, then we'll... No, no there's still a lot of water inside it. Because you really don't want water seeping up the smoke. So it has to be dry, dry. Okay, right. Here's the look of concentration. <laughs> I am. <laughs> right, last potato. That's done. So that's definitely over a kilo in there. A potato, probably like a, a kilo and a bit. Easy. There was about seven potatoes there, medium-sized potatoes. I would say. There was three in the meat ones. <laughs> Stop coming so close. Right, okay. So they washed potatoes all being put inside there. So I actually do have, I've only got a little bit left, so I have got frozen veg. Um, so this has got carrots and peas and sweet corn in it. And I'm going to add that straight in. So a little bit, so it's probably about a quarter of a cup, but I'm adding that in. Right. I'm also, so to get an equal amount, you want to give it an equal amount of veg. The potato to peas, equal amount. If I had more mixed veg, I would add more mixed veg, but I didn't. So, probably about... I haven't got any spice in yet, I'm just trying to make sure there's an equal amount of potato to peas, which there is. That's a tiny bit more and we're done. So that's okay for the frozen. Right, so I'll put frozen veg into that. Okay. Uh, happy birthday from Asthma Ikma. Thank you, Asthma. I love the way all our Asian lot are watching because they all know how to make smoothies and you're all brilliant cooks. And you need to all give me ideas, I keep telling you. So I think nobody's telling me anything. Me, that's giving everything away. Right, okay, so let's put spices. I haven't still put the gas on, actually, I'll start putting it on now. So I'm just going to put the gas on now a little bit. And we put a tiny dot of oil just to stop it sticking at the bottom, although I don't need that. All the spices sticking. So, salt. Now, potato and veg needs a little bit less because it's quite, you know, they soak up a lot less, so you'll taste it very quickly. And you'll see what I mean. So you can always add a bit more as well. So I've done half a tablespoon of salt this time. Actually less even. So can, you can always add more, don't forget, towards the end. So, and again, chilies, I might add some green chilies to it. So I'm only going to add less because you do get the heat quite quickly with potatoes and veg. So it's about a quarter. So in that, I had about half. That had about a quarter of a tablespoon. Okay. So in goes the salt. No, we can sorry, turmeric. So I've got that half a tablespoon. Colouring it. So, curry powder. Let's go again. That half a tablespoon. Don't forget, this is my version. Everybody's got their own version of what they want to do, and that's absolutely fine. Somebody suggested I'm chew. So I'm actually going to add this. It's a mango, and it gives like a tartness to it. So I'm going to add, let's see what the taste is like. Something interesting. So we're going to add a bit of and chew to it, which is the mango one, which is optional, don't forget, because these are just additional spices. So, I've got cloves, that's optional, don't forget the amchoo, it's only because somebody suggested it to me. So I'm adding about four cloves, five cloves, four or five cloves there, and some cinnamon stick. I have put bay leaf in, I normally would do it just because it's stuck under about a million things at the moment, so. One, two. Two's two enough, Seems a lot, it's a small amount. And with vegetables, what do I always put in? I always put my fennel in. So it's about, I've got about a tablespoon's worth of fennel seeds. Because it just gives it a nice flavour, yumness. 
Is that bubbling away too much? Yeah. Okay, so now, don't forget it's dry underneath, so we need to put some water in. Now, you need to put just enough. Now, not a huge amount, so it's probably about, start with a quarter of a cup. So it's just at the bottom first, okay? And let, because don't forget the peas, peas are frozen, I should say. So they're going to give a natural water out as well. So let that just cook first. Okay, you can add more water in a bit. Don't put too much in because you'll end up with a very soggy mix otherwise. Just going to slightly low the heat, let that just cook. Okay. Right, we're going back to the mince mixture. Right, which is drying out quite nicely. There's still a bit of water there, but it's drying out. So we're going to lower the heat on this. This is nearly done now. So what we're going to do... Now, I personally like this. Everybody's got their own things. Where's my garlic? I actually do put a bit of garlic in my samosas. Not everybody does. But it just gives it a very big yumminess. So, let's put the potatoes back up. I'm just putting the potatoes on higher gas because I don't want it to come to a boil first. It's just there's no cooking going on. Is there an alternative if you don't like fennel? Yeah, no, don't. You just don't use it. Simple. Don't put it in. The amateur is a different one. I think the other carom seeds was a different flavour you could use. As well, the carom, um, a drain, but only a tiny little dot because it's a very, very strong flavour. Don't forget, and can simply just omit it if you don't like it. Just omit it. Don't don't use it. The main spices, don't forget, I've always said is salt, chili powder, the turmeric, and actually garam masala, which I haven't put in yet. We usually put that towards the end. Don't forget. So just doing the thing. Do you want to just stir that mince? How much garlic are you using? Right, I'm actually, I'm going to peel a bulb. I would normally do a bulb. No, I do actually. No, I'm going to put half in each, to be honest. I'm going to put slightly more than a bulb. And I'm going to put half a bulb in each one. So, it's like, what, four cloves, five cloves each? I'm going to do because I'm going to put it into both. So I'm just going to peel it together for now. So it's just easier. This is dry now. Don't leave it, it's fine. It's okay, it's on low gas. That's how you cook the piece still to cook as well. It's on the lowest gas. Well, it's not the lowest gas, yeah. Yeah, it's not like us. You'd rather it be very dry. Oh, we've got another wasp. I can hear it. Something buzzing behind me. Okay. Probably the same one. Okay, let's go for... So, as I said, garlic is optional as well. Not a lot of people put garlic in. I just like the flavour of it in my samosas. You don't have to put it in. Okay, this is just my take on samosas. Don't forget, there's about a million different techniques to it, right? So, a little chopper is going out. So, chopper's going on. You can chop it up, you can do whichever way. I just use my chopper because it's the easiest and the quickest way to do it. I don't tend to put ginger in this, I just think it's quite a strong... Flavour, so I don't, we don't really use, put ginger and do we sort of thing. Although I have seen recipes that do use ginger, but well, I don't anyway. But I said that's optional, it's, you can obviously you can pick and choose what you want. Now I don't normally put it straight in, keep the phone on there, sort of thing. So I normally do cook. So I'm going to just take the mince off. My own little faithful whole frying pan, and I, I do cook the like more like a dorka basically. I do cook the garlic because usually I put it towards the end. And I don't want raw garlic paste. So and to be a little bit, I don't need a lot because we're not doing a dorka, so it's just a little bit just to cook it. So we're near the end of the meat one. The meat one is nearly done. So I haven't checked the spicy yet, the salty yet. But I'm going to add some garam masala to it. I'm going to stir the potato first as well. You yeah, haven't stirred that yet. Still got a lot of water. Still got water at the bottom of it, and that's fine. Let the flavours all. Yeah, so I've downloaded for the first time to cook for long. I was stuck, and I've missed out on the vegetable beginning. Okay, so right. 
Just bear with me a second, hang on, I need to get this part up done first and I'll go through with what I put inside it. Plus you can watch it later on, but I will go through it in a second. Let me just get this garlic cooking. Right, I'll add the garlic to both now, because it doesn't matter when you put it in really, but I put it towards the end of the mince. Okay, so I'm going to split this in half. It hasn't cooked a lot though. It does, you can smell it. You don't want it to be burnt, you can't smell it, you can't burn it. You can see those, that's burnt. So, I'm going to put half of this in here, and half of it into the potato one. So it's a half a bowl of each, basically. So, Yasma was just asking what, what I put into potatoes, roughly just over a kilo of potatoes, I think. It's about seven small to medium sized potatoes. And I've done equivalent amount of peas, I have frozen peas and frozen mixed veg, a little bit of each into it as well. Then I put some spices in, your salt, salt, chili, turmeric, curry powder, a little bit of cloves. I put the anchure in, as you said, um, and now I've cinnamon stick and cloves, and now we're just putting the garlic in, just because it's an additional thing that I like doing, okay? So it's cooked, I've cooked the garlic just so that it's not raw, because this mince is nearly done. Right, I'm going to lower that heat on the mince. That's more. Now we're adding garam masala to the mince. So this is like literally on low heat. I put a lot of, you do put a lot of garam masala in, but that's important as well. You want a lot of flavours coming through. Tablespoon. Oh, a tablespoon, yeah. Good to, I've done both. Shop bought and a whole ground garam masala. I put in both sort of things. So that's that one. Now the other thing I like using, so don't forget the back is still cooking. So you've got the veg cooking there with a little bit of water. Not a lot, just a little bit. So we're going to go, so I'm not putting the garam masala on the back here yet. But we are going to put in some onion. So right at the end, when the meat is done, we like putting, well I like putting in onions raw. So you don't have to cook the onions because I'll turn the gas off once I put the onions in. That natural heat of the, the food that's been cooked, the most mix will actually cook the onions and the frying will cook the onions. And it's got a bit of a crunch then rather than everything all mushed in together. Come on, peel. Uh, do I add water and oil in with the veggies? I added a little bit of oil just at the beginning to stop it sticking and then I put in probably about a quarter of a mug of water. And don't forget the peas has got a natural water as well. So I don't want to put too much to because I don't want it to go soggy. You can always add a bit more if you need to, don't forget. So you can see the water bubbling up. Go closely, you can see it bubbling up there. What you're trying to make is dry mixes. Yeah, but without breaking. I mean, you, you might get a bit of mush because potatoes are hit and miss. Put too much water in. It's still edible. You might get a little bit of mushy potato, but that's fine. Sort of thing. So, so as long as, you know, it's a learning thing and you'll, you and I get it wrong sometimes. I put too much water in. So I'm turning the mince one off. Let's just check there's no water at the bottom there. It's nice and dry. We turn that off. I'm going to slice it. Now what we're going to do is oh, is that dice knife? it. Is that knife sharp? Nice and sharp. Did you get your sharpening tool, Mr. Chowdhury? <laughs> I bought a sharpening tool. She's it's got like a habit. An hour. No, you spent about an hour, didn't you, the other day? Yeah. She's got a habit of having blunt... And all he was doing was sharpening knives. It's really funny. She's got a habit of <laughs> having did, blunt knives in the kitchen. So this is quite you amusing to large onions. Shut up all the You don't actually it. cut a tomato, you just flatten it. Right, I'm putting that gas on low. So I'm actually lowering the gas on the potatoes again because it's sticking at the bottom. Just, you've got to keep one eye on it, don't forget as well. I'm staring So you through. just put the tomatoes in. Uh, sorry, the uh, onions. Onion. I'm going to put the other onion half in as well. So it's a full onion. The more onion go, the better. It's nice oniony flavour, this. Uh, somebody said for me, not only the samosa has to be good, but the chutney has to be good. Oh, we've done the chutney the other day. Come on, people. I've got some in the freezer ready to go, but we're not going to... This is actually... You know, people have asked me to make me samosa, so all the samosa I'm making today is going out to people. I'm not even getting any today. So, currently, I've got about 300 samosas to make, and that's not even including the family. And I said to people I wasn't even making samosas. I think it's about 350 actually at the moment. This in the next couple of days. So I think it's my birthday this evening is making samosas. 
as I said, I've got a chicken mince, two kilos of chicken mince cooked in the fridge as well, ready to make. So that's like, this is honestly, it's off the gas. So I'm just using the natural heat to let the onions cook. Um, okay. Which video is the chutney one on? The chutney one was the beginning of the pakoras. Right at the beginning of the pakoras. The pakora video. Right at the beginning. Very beginning. First five minutes. Okay. So, I need, last final thing. I'm going to check the flame first of all, before I have the last thing. Is check your heat. You want it to be spicy. You don't want it to be mild. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add some green chilies because I still think it needs more heat. Salt is not far off, but I'm going to add some green chilies. Salt's nice, actually. For me. So, one. I'll about four green chilies for this one, maybe five. The smaller the spice. Yeah, so I'm just going to wash them. We just wash the chilies. Take the ends off. Let's add some heat to it. Oh, that was yummy. That was really nice, that. That's my lunch sorted. You didn't put the onions in that one. I haven't finished it yet, that's why. It's not the end. It's still cooking. I always put it at the end. So there's about three, four chilies there. I'm going to sprinkle it through so it's an even mix. Just because it was not enough heat to me. So, and you will get that background heat of the chilies. Stir it through. And the last final thing in this one that I like putting in is my favourite coriander. Yay! The parsley. The parsley, the parsley. You behave. Right, I'm just going to wash it very quickly. And I'm going to just chop it right off because I'm going to mix it. Although I've got the bottoms there, and I could, what I tend to do is put that in a freezer bag um, and separately sometimes so I can use it for the bottoms of curries. But I want to just mix the whole batch together because I need it for both. I used to put it into both of these. Don't forget, if you haven't got coriander, it really is optional. Your base mix is actually done now. Your actual samosa mix for meat is actually cooked, ready. Salma says it looks like parsley. Just doesn't it? Salma, you're making me sticky toffee pudding. Salma's making sticky toffee pudding and it's yummy. Looking forward to me with dessert later. I think we're going to get a nice little takeout. I think if I'm right, I don't know what I'm decided. What am I having for, what are we having for birthday? What meal? I no. I'm decided happily. Okay, so back one. Let me just quickly stare at that because I can watch it. Always keep an eye on your veggie without stirring it too much. You know, you want it to be, potatoes are not thoroughly cooked here, yeah? but they're still whole, which is nice, which is a good thing. Right, so I'm going to put half, I'm going to make mix it all equally, so you get a bit of stalk, a bit of that, and I'm going to put half of that into here. Okay, the other half I'll put into the veg. Okay, and don't forget to stir, the reason I stir it through now is because when it gets cold, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really very well so you need to and also the heat is natural heat is cooking and wilting the coriander so it's a nice way to finish it off coriander gets everywhere okay that is that one done right so one mix is done i checked the spice check the heat i'm happy with that right. make sure you taste it because you can't once you start frying it it's done it's whatever it is and hopefully a good chutney will take away if it's too bland but that's a good samosa mix right that's that one done I'm going to bring the potato one forward, low heat, I've got very low heat, because I don't want it to over cook. So. Salma said uh, she's got the ingredients forward to sticky toffee pudding. Too right, too right. So I'm going to get my onion out ready while that's all. Somebody, it's got the, it's got, so somebody asked me, sorry, what did I have inside here? So I've got potatoes about a kilo. Probably about a mug worth of peas, some fixed veg, frozen. Then we spice a little bit of oil, spice it, then a little bit of, now I'll put the spices in first, which is like your salt, chili powder, turmeric, curry powder. I haven't put the garam masala in yet. Put a little bit of cloves in. I put fennel seeds in, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. That's not a problem at all. Um, it's whatever, whatever you want to do with that, that's fine sort of thing. Um, and then I'm now, I'm going to stick with a bit of cloves I put inside. Now I'm going to do, Exactly what's it? Oh, I've had a little bit of fried garlic as well because I like that flavour in my samosas. Uh, next thing is the onion again. I prefer the vegetable. 
samosas. You do, don't you? I'm going to show you a trick of how to make the both two different samosas so you can tell them apart as well. So I'll see that the pastry making in a minute. This is nearly done, by the way. Taste is very quick, so they'll be done in about five minutes. So I'm just going to wash my onion. So, okay, slice the onion exactly the same. Yep, that's a very sharp knife. And you're happy now? Must have got, he spent an hour doing this sharpening knives. That's one. So I've got the coriander and the onion together because they're both going in at the same time, so that doesn't matter. Okay. Well, this is a quite a good comment. Like Jasmine says, convenience of cook along is we can't get lazy. Brilliant idea. Do you know, loads of people have been messaging me what they've been cooking because they've been, they've been inspired to do it sort of thing and they go, oh, we haven't done that and we haven't done that. So it's really good. I have had loads of people messaging me over it sort of thing, so which has been really positive. Keeps everybody busy and actually getting cooking again, which is nice as well. Uh, parsley is not good for Indian food. I don't nice? use parsley. Can we just <laughs> emphasise this point? Actually, I use it in work. Right, okay, so my water is nearly dry. The water is dry. It's <laughs> nearly gone. Okay, sure. I'm using the baby spoon here. Right, get a potato out and check that it is cooked or nearly cooked at least. No, I've not cooked it yet. I'm hoping it needs a bit longer. Okay, let that cook. I'm even actually going to put a lid over it, so I'm not going to actually put any extra water in. I'm just going to steam it and simmer. Okay. So, I'm going to put that in the basket again. Sorry, sir. Just because I'm going to get on with pastry and show you how to do pastry, so steam. yeah. So I'm just, just going to steam that on low gas, just to let because there's enough water there. So I don't want to put more. If I put more water in now, it's going to go soggy. So I'm just going to let the steam cook it rather than. That's when you really get the smell when you're steaming yeah. it. So I'm going to put in the back gas there and let that cook a little bit, sort of thing. So about five ten minutes. Let me take all this lot out the way because we're going to do some rolling in a minute. Shyst has uh, said, you're going to drop your present off, knock at the door, send Bilal to get it. No, send well, Bilal. sorry, right now he's, he's online, so he can't open the door either. He's so doing his lessons. They're, they're online, so nobody's going to open the door at the moment. Sorry, kids. Shyst, it's not happening. Yeah, she's, she is ungrateful. Yeah, well, thank you, Shyst. Sure. She knew I was doing this, so I don't know why she was coming to deliver right now. Soft woman. I'm Tell coming, her, soft I'm coming woman. To drop the no, no, go away. Go away. Literally. <laughs> Quite sad and grateful they're probably doing that. Go away. <laughs> right. I think we've got rid of most of it. We're just going to put this to the side because we need this area. Do that for a second. So this is the rolling. Well, we're going to rolling closer. now in a second. Okay, keep that there. So, we're going to get the old faithful power out. Put that on a little bit of heat. And what can people use if they haven't got that? A wide frying pan, flat frying pan, literally. And so, if, you have got, if you've got, if you haven't got the This is dawa, an ancient tool for cooking flatbread. Yeah, if you haven't got the dawa, I'd suggest, I'm going to show you two ways of making samosas. So, I'd suggest making the smaller ones. It's easier. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe that surface. Just getting organised and just wiping the surface so it's easy. We've got spices everywhere. That's okay. steaming away. Yep. I'll check on that in a second. Okay. Nice, have a quick stir of that, just to check. Okay, without it, so without it burning at the bottom, at the potatoes. Look. Right, I'm just going to lower that a little bit more. Okay, give that to me, so. Right, so dough is on. Do you remember our dough? We made a dough at the beginning. Okay, so we've got the plain flour. A little bit sticky, that's fine, but I just didn't want it to dry out. It's fine. Okay, so it's plain flour, oil, salt, and I put my jello seeds in mine. So I'm going to leave this pan out of the way. Sorry. With the. So I need two surfaces. So when I made the thing, I literally put it straight on here, the dough. The, you'll see what I mean. 
So you can make pastry. The way I'm making it is to show you how, so you can freeze them, literally, okay? So you can do raw ones, you can make samosa straight from the dough, put the filling in, but you have to let the filling go cold to do that, and then fry it straight away, okay? But this way, this technique, you actually can freeze it, sort of thing. So, flour is my surface. Now I'm going to need, You need oil. You do need oil. What type of oil? Any vegetable oil, sunflower oil, whatever. And I need my couple of goodies. Pastry brush is the easiest one. Or you can use your fingers if you want to dab. It's fine. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It's going to make it easier because what we're going to do is we're going to make like two layers. So, and you split it. And it's a very little bit simple. I'm going to make the smaller, well, so you can get either triangle small samosas or you can get big fan shaped ones. So I'm gonna do the big fan shaped one first because that's simpler, okay? And usually I'll do that with veg samosas, but because it's not cooked here, let's have a look. Uh, so just, are you giving away our family secret? <laughs> I think a lot of people know how to do your jack woman. <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret, is it? Oh, she's a funny. Right, okay. We've been doing this since we were kids, haven't we, Sama? We're giving it over, like, nearly 50, but literally we've been doing this since like 8, 9, 10 years old, osmosis, this technique. All right, so I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to do the largest osmosis first. So how much did you grab? I'm going to show you now. So, for the largest osmosis, you make smaller bowls. Okay, so this is probably about 20 grams, I reckon. I don't think it's more than that. 20, 25 grams. So make them slightly bigger, just so you can see it. So, yeah. That's how much dough I've got. Golf done. ball. Probably size, maybe slightly smaller. What about a golf ball? God. I don't so, play golf. So, both roughly equal. You're not going to get ever, gonna, unless you have a weighing scale next year, you're never going to get exactly the same. That's fine. So, we're going to roll it out. Okay, so you've got two. So, I've got this. Is, so, this is the larger samosas, it's not the smaller ones. So, what you want to do is roll it out. It's very sticky, so you need flour. Yep. You need to keep dousing it. In okay, flour so that's that bit there. It's not ready yet, so I'm going to do the second one. So we do two at a time. Now, rolling rolling pastry does take a little bit of time. This normally, if I was just doing myself, this amount for one kilo, it does take about 45 minutes to roll a load out, sort of thing. You'll make about with one kilo, you'll make about 90 samosas of flour. So you've got two roughly the same size spheres. So what we do is use the oil. Sphere. Yeah, oh, discs, whatever. Right, so use the oil. And then also, so you've got coated it with oil. Not too much, don't overcoat it. Sprinkle it with flour, don't know why, it works. And then you put the second one on top. So you've got two layers together. Okay. Right, and then roll it out. Okay, but you want it to go wider. Okay, this is the simplest, honestly, this is going to be the simpler one because I'll show you the bigger one in a second. So, I'll do this a couple of times so you can get it. Probably about a small tea plate size. What do you reckon? Okay, that's about the right size, okay? So, I'm going to still, doing me, if you don't do that, I'd roll it out a little bit more, okay? Okay, that's probably the size I want. God, I just have to I just have to do this. So don't forget though what is warm, you can feel the steam coming off it. You haven't got one of these. This, so this is ideal for a frying pan because it's a smaller shape. So I think if you're doing the bigger one, you'll see afterwards it takes up the full dough. But this is easier if you've got a frying pan. I'm just gonna stir the potatoes. Okay, I'm just gonna check on my potatoes. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that done? Mm. That's done. Nearly done. Nearly done. So what's happening here? I'm waiting for it to cook. You'll see, like it goes like a raw colour. So from white to raw, that's where it's cooking. Like it's literally changing colour. You can see it. So, but I don't want it to be overcooked either. So flip over. That's all you want. Just that's it. So one on each side. That's it. And then you take it off. Literally. Okay, done. 
So it's partially cooked, okay? We've just started the cooking on there. So I'm just gonna do two. So I'm gonna do two lots of the same. So you get it. Okay, so it's a bit smaller than that. What if you had garlic in the oil? <laughs> It'd probably burn up on there. No, actually it wouldn't actually, would it? How are you gonna put the garlic in the oil? You're gonna chop it up and yeah. infuse it, what are you gonna do? It's infused into the oil. I swear to god. He wants me to do a lot of do cake as well, by the way. Right, okay, so two doughs, roughly the same. Actually, this is slightly smaller, I'm gonna turn it up more. So golf ball size. Okay. So or chili flakes in the oil. No, that definitely no. So I said it's just rough, don't forget. Right. Okay, that's one. Now, second one. Roughly the same size, make sure, okay? Right, does anybody want anything cooking during Ramazan? Anybody got any ideas for what they actually want to watch? I'm going to probably do a later time, about half five. Just so people can have a rest in the morning. Um, so we're going to go like on a Sunday at half five to about half six. To give people time to get organised for iftari time. So I hope that's okay. Right, so I'm going to put that on top again. Exactly the same. Oil, a little sprinkling of flour. Pat it down. Okay. And... Roughly a tea plate size. Somebody's asked for rice malai. Oh, that's a good one. We like that. Okay, so I'm going to flip it myself a little bit. But you don't have to. You can just roll it out a bit more if you haven't got that confidence. So don't forget. So that's all I'm going to do with that size. I'm going to roll the bigger one out only because I need to. I'll do the glue together. Okay, that's done. That is done. Let's just check one more time. <laughs> one year. I haven't flicked that over. It's not drying yet. No. Okay, so it's starting to just slightly mush, which is nice. But always check that your potatoes are cooked as they're still a couple of little minutes. Because I'm doing it on very, very low heat, so I'm just taking time. I don't want to add more water. So that's just two of those, that's all I'm doing. So I think that's fine. One slightly bigger than the other. So we're gonna sort that out in a second. Come back down in a minute. All right, the next thing. So I'm gonna do the, a larger one, which will make the small, the triangle samosas. Like we make, a, make a big batch of these usually. Like a pasty. I don't know, it depends which one. So this is slightly bigger, I made. So you make the ball slightly bigger, as you can see. So they are bigger. Same with that one. About a third, a third line. Size big, yeah. Because this will be rolled out a bit more. So that's why you need the dough to be fairly soft because you are rolling out quite a bit. So this is most. So I will tend to do this one for the meat, which you'll see, and the other smaller ones, which actually are larger samosas for the veg. You don't want to make it too thin. You do. You want to get quite thin. Eh? You see, you'll see. Because you're going to roll it out bigger. Of course you do. What do you mean hair? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, second one. But they'll so break, these are bigger. You, no, they'll they break don't. when you're frying them. No. Right, the best way, because people will put the hot filling in, if you can wait and let that cool. That's why I've done the chicken mince yesterday. Then when you put it in the freezer and then take it out to defrost and stuff like that, it won't crack sort of thing, because usually it's the heat from this that you put straight into the samosas. Right, so it's slightly bigger, so you just need so to... So cold, put the cold... Cool filling. as cool as possible, yeah. Right, so they're about roughly the same size. So again, same principle. So I'm going to do a double layer. You can just roll one out quite big yourself if you want to, but this will make it thinner. This will make it a lot more thinner. Bit of flour sprinkling on top. Second one goes on top. I am making it look very easy. This does take a bit of time, by the way. 
you'll get used to it. it just takes a bit of time and usually we spend two three hours making samosas that's why everybody always avoids it because you know you're going to spend a bit of time making samosas now this is getting bigger which is why i said if you've got a frying pan do the other technique which you, i'll show you how to finish off so these are getting bigger and thinner okay so you've got two quite thin i'm going to roll out like a chapati with a chapati but i wanted to hopefully just turn that heat down a little bit Right, so I want it to hopefully, this is smoking hot, so cover most of the, the pan, which is fine. So I'm going to make them quite large, you see, well, large -ish. even spreading this out to make sure we get it right on. So full, but this will make eight samosas, <laughs> watch how that will make, this will, these will make four samosas each, so you've got eight there. This alone will make eight samosas. So it sounds like you're doing a tedious job, but you're covering eight, so you just need ten of them and you'll make eighty. So it's actually quite easy. Right, so what I'm going to do, this should be done that easy now because it's not breaking up, is do you remember the coriander and the onions? So we're going to add the chopped onion, so it's a whole onion and the half a bunch of coriander I'm adding to that. Right, and I've got one of the spice vinegar and masala. So both got them solid, because I haven't put either in a yes sort of thing, so. Take less of that one, more of the other one. Oh, I'm going to take this off, which doesn't need to be on. So this is going to go over here, so you've got just slightly cooked. So you can see the size comparison. There you go. So good. So I put a tablespoon worth of garam masala as well in the potato, so. So I put the whole garam masala in about a tablespoon's worth. So now I'm going to give that a good stir. I'm going to turn that potato one off and just give it a good stir. Just while in the heat, natural heat, let everything melt through. Now I haven't checked the spice here, so I will do before I fill it. In a second, I will check the spice and the heat. That's a nice filling. So. Oh. Uh, What's in the dough? Just plain flour, Plain seeds. flour, salt, oil. That's your basis. If you've got nigella seeds in, then add nigella seeds. Um, but if you can't, add water. That's it. I think I'll just check the spice in the back one, in case I need to add anything to it. Stop watching me eat it. <laughs> That's nice. That's a vegetable you don't even need because it takes a lot of heat. It's gorgeous. That's going to that one. Oh, oh, how many samosas nice. can you get from one piece? Okay. On. What, the dough or the filling? Right. So, we to, I just, should I do one more large one roll up first? Or should I just, should we just show you how to make those? Tell me. Okay, what I'm going to do is, right, we've got a pastry out there. So, I've got a separate bowl. We're going to make some paste as well. So, I'll turn the heat off this though well for now because I can make, I can roll out millions of those later on. So, we'll make a paste. Why are you making a paste? To glue it together. You need a glue. You need some form of glue. You have to have a glue to go with this. Okay. Okay, so. Literally use your finger. You can use a spoon, but you won't feel it. You won't be able to feel it properly. So just literally water and plain flour. And you want it. You're making a paste to bind it all together. Starting to get there yet, just a tiny bit more. You don't want too runny either, you don't want to be too loose. So, this has to be sticky, yeah, like wallpaper paste basically. So, it's like a glue, gloopy glue, or gruel, yeah, that as well. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my hands just because I need to do something first. That's what Oliver Twist eats. <laughs> Shut up, you boy. Okay, go. Right, so what we need. So we've got these two. So we'll do the, the small size first. So they're both equally on top of each other. Normally I have a stack and I cut right down the middle. 
of these. Okay, so put them there like that. And if you're not using them, say I'm going to do them half an hour, make sure they're fully wrapped in tea towel, completely in burst in tea towels. No, because I'll do like 50, 60, 100s. So I'll cut them in half and I'll double wrap them in tea towels to stop it drying out because that would dry out quite quickly. That's really important that you wrap it in tea towel if you're not using it. This one, we're now going to cut into quarters. Right, don't forget. So you've got quarters on the big one and you've got halves on this one. Right, so I normally do veg, so I'm going to put one veg. So because it makes it easier for me to know what I've got, I would normally do the crescent, the largest smosas in veg, and then I can ch check in the freezer. Somebody asks me veg smosas, I know that they're veg. And I always do these, tend to do in meat. Unless somebody specifically asks me, then I do these in meat. Okay. So, so tablespoons to both pans. So what we do, so we'll split it. Now you should be able to get between the layers and split it. So you've got one, two, you've got three, four, should be eight on this side here. Ooh, let's get through. Come on, you. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got eight samosas to do here. That just with two rolls. Okay, so what we do? You grab your crescent in your hand. Get your glue and glue. So basically, you're making a cone. You can do whichever way you want to. This is the way I do it. So you're bringing it together and making a cone. So I've just used that glue. To bring it together and to make a cone okay or you can bring it together first work it out and then put the glue down the middle but it's easier if you just put the glue on first so it's like one we'll third well we're going to do it in a second we will do it a second i'll do it for you with them so you're right so put the glue down i bring it across and bring it across <laughs> that was the family secret Giving it away, haven't I, Sal? <laughs> right, okay. I'm not asking you any more curries. So I'm going to do, I know this is hot, but because normally I teach you, honestly, let this cool down first because you you want it to be cool because when you're freezing it, it should be cool anyway. And when you bring it back to room temperature, it's got to be sort of cool. It'll crack the pastry otherwise there's a heat that's there. So I'm just going to do one or two of these for now. So I think so. A tablespoon. That tablespoon. So this is a potato. This is a potato one. Don't forget. You're filling it with enough room to seal to it. To seal it. So just enough across the top. Just put that there and pinch it together. It's very simple. I'll do another one of these. I'm just going to do two of these. So because these are here, I'm going to automatically because I don't like my pastries drying out. So I'm going to do these in a bit afterwards. So I'm going to cover these in pastry and thing because I don't want them to dry out. Simple. Okay. I'll come back to that in a second afterwards. See, I can do that later on, you see. There it is. Okay, so that's one. And also do the pastry last, as in like, say, half the, just before you're going to actually use it. Um, don't leave it out all day. It, it does dry out. It is fresh pastry, don't forget. So it does dry out. So this is the crescent one. This will be the easier one. And you can do the mince filling into this as well. Don't forget, you can make these with mince in this one as well. But I just, I'm doing the mince in the other way just for my sanity that I know which samosa is which. So that's two veg samosas. Right, your hand does get gluey, this. Right, let's go back to the other quarters. I'll do the bigger one, let's go big one. Now you can go down the middle and you can split it out. Sometimes it sticks at the end, that's fine, it doesn't matter. Even if they rip and that, you can cover it, it's dead dead easy. You will be able to, you'll be able to cover it. Okay, so I'll just open a couple of them for now. So you can do either side. I just go where the curve is. I feel as though it's coming towards me. So you've got this shape here. What you're trying to do is to bring it together to make a triangle. Okay? So you see where it is. You've got the point against you. So bring it to So I'm going to put glue along here in a minute. And you're trying to bring it together to get a nice neat in the middle. So we will tend to put glue. So I'll tend to bring this over, hold it across, then I'll put glue here. So all you need to do is bring it across the middle. Okay, so that, you can fill, then I'll fill this one with meat. So you got, this is the meat samosas. It's about 
about two, one and a half, two tablespoons worth. So, and then you enough to seal it in. Okay, fill it in. Okay, and then you get your paste and you bring the last triangle over. Seal as much as you can. If your corners are not perfectly, it doesn't matter, honestly. Just take a little bit more oil in the, the frying pan, but every single whole set. So the two different shapes. I'll do one more of these, and I'll show you the two different shapes. So again, you know, the triangle, the point at the top of your corner. So I don't even put the glue on it yet, so I'll bring it together even in my hand, so I know what I'm doing. So I'll always bring it together, across, put the glue, or put the glue here, whichever, so you know where it is. Bit more glue at the bottom there to dry. So I'll put a bit of glue at the bottom there. Okay. Right, so you've got a little cone. Then go back to your filling. Okay. Now don't forget you have got your cinnamon stick in there. So either you can take that all out first, first beforehand, but I tend to spot them sort of thing, so I know where they are. I can always see little black bits floating around, so I know where they are. Well, if you're paranoid, take them out first. Okay, right, so there you go. Take that across and take that across right okay so that is four so you've got two meat and two veg and they are complete they are different shapes not completely different shapes but this has got the seal to the side there's a crescent across the top sort of thing so and then this is like the triangle ones so when i'm freezing them my freezer's actually full i forgot to empty it so what you need to do is you get a full tray of your freezer shelf line it with cling film and you just space these across literally across so you'll get like 10 on there get your next cling film layer put the next load on so but these are still warm so i wouldn't even put them in the freezer yet sort of thing so i'll spend the afternoon i'll let these cool down for a bit then i'll come back and i'll make loads of pastries in a bit and then i'll fill my freezer and you can just lay them on top just put cling film over each layer and then you do the next layer on top it takes about a day a day and a half to freeze overnight definitely leave it overnight um, maybe sometimes two days and then you can split them all out and put them into little carry bags or food bags how you want to sort of thing okay um, any questions on that yes yeah, only because i can't show you that bit but it's dead dead easy it literally is just space What's them the out frying time okay so when you take them out of the freezer they will be frozen solid we tend to either you can take them out of the freezer and leave them out for an hour to defrost or we tend to put like six on a tea plate and put them in the microwave for a minute because it thaws out the mixture in the middle. So it starts it off and then you'll fry them. You'll see yourself about, because they're already pre-cooked, about, what, five minutes? We didn't take that much. It's just, you'll see them go golden brown. If you did them this way, they won't bubble up as much, sort of thing, from frozen. If you did, like, if I did this now, fry these now, these would be lovely and bubbly and that because so the freezer kind of like affects that a little bit and you don't get the big bubbles. But if I did these now straight away, put them in the fryer, they would bubble up really, really well, sort of thing. So, um, but that's just because I want to freeze these and I need to freeze these. How so many? I'll put them in there. But how long will it take to fry them? Fifty smoses or no one. About five minutes, roughly. So you just put the fryer on it to turn it around. Five minutes. About five minutes or so. It's you. You have to let the, the pastry cook as well. Don't forget. Um, anything else I haven't covered before we finish off? Kimberly says happy birthday. Thank you, Kimberly. Go for the lie down a minute. No, I'm not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to finish here. Say thank you for watching. Oh, hang on, look at this over here. This has been my morning. I've been making cakes for, I did say making cakes for the NHS workers. This was the cake we made yesterday. I did finish it off a little bit. So I did add a bit more extra buttercream, finished it off. I've got a bit more buttercream there. I've even got some meringue whites left over, which we're going to whip up, make meringue nests as well. This is all going to go out to the NHS. Because our cell is cooking my cake for me today. Is it not a key work, as I should say? It's all going out. Actually, another tray of cake has already gone out as well. Sort of thing. My neighbour's a doctor. She is expecting some cake as well, bless her. So we shall be chucking some over to her as well. Right, thank you for all those who've wished me a happy birthday and Sal as well, sort of thing. I'm sure she'll say thank you as well. Um, I shall see you next Sunday. Take care.